who are their podcast friends? This is cheesy. And what is the play date we're going to put them on? And that means who's the partner and what is the partnership? We call them friends because we might be working with a client for two months, but this, we call them friends as we have identified this audience for you. Go wild. Do more than one thing. Get on a call every couple of months. And I know that if you talk to these people who are in your genre and have the same audience, you're going to think of something that no one else has ever done. I love this. And I, let, let's drill into that uh, a little bit more. So when you're doing this, a couple of questions here. So one is sort of how many potential friends, partners do you identify as sort of a starting point? And then what is that initial out? Let's say you don't have any relationship with it. Let's say they're not hiring you to do it. They're doing it themselves, right? Are they looking to identify three shows, five shows, 20 shows? What are they looking for? Do the shows, the potential friends need to be people at a sort of similar level of theirs? Does that matter? Are they aiming bigger, smaller? Doesn't really matter. And then what does that initial outreach look like to those people? So many good questions. Okay. I always say when I'm consulting people, I'm like, I would love it if you could leave this call and go find three podcast friends. Three is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but that's manageable. When I am working on a campaign for someone, I do 10 at a time. I feel like that's a manageable number for that you're not overwhelmed. You can really dedicate time to each one, each because they're going to be very different partnership ideas. Hopefully, the, the more individualized, the better. I would say three to 10 when you're getting started. Three is a great place to start. And the size thing is a really good question because it's like, yeah, I, I think a lot of times people just go for shows that are similar to theirs, but I would make a mix because that's great. You can definitely do that. But all I would do a mix between your size and larger because it's like what I said, and smaller. No, I'm going to say everything because what I said, finding mm -hmm. the right audience is key. So if you find the right audience, figure out a way to work together. And so if you're going after a larger show, you might just have to do more legwork. You might have to give them more things in return for one thing. That's fine. I was talking about these promo swaps. So that's the 30 second ad that you're doing. Usually shows swap when they're about the same size. That makes sense. It's an ad. But then another way to work with someone is to give them an entire file of an episode of your show and have them do the same in return. And I have found that people don't care if the number is the same because it's not an ad. It doesn't sound like an ad. It's really, really good content. You could go to someone much bigger than you and say, would you like to put an entire episode onto my feed in return for just an ad or something like that. So, and prove to them that you have the perfect audience. Once you find that audience, I, I am very optimistic that even if they're bigger than you, you can find a way to work together. And then as far as reaching out, a shorter letter is better. I say when you're reaching out 100 to 300 words, you don't need to tell them your whole story. You don't need to tell them everything about your show. Please don't send a PDF or anything for them to download or listen to. You need to get the door open. You need to say, I did research. Our audience is similar. We could both grow together. Do you want to talk to me? You know, really all you need is a response. So when you're doing that outreach, you're not pitching a specific, let's do a promo swap. You're, you're sort of starting the conversation and say, hey, let's, there's, I think there's a way we could help each other. Do you want to hop on a call? Do you want to have a conversation about it? Whatever. And then in that conversation, I assume floating some ideas and are you open to this or that or whatever? Is that correct? Yes. Unless I know that they, I've swapped with them before, or I know this person mm -hmm. or something. Because a lot of times also, if you haven't done this before and you get a long email about that, you might think it's spam. You might not be overwhelmed. Right. You might. So really just a really friendly note saying you want to be podcast friends or whatever word you want to use. It's <laughs> less cheesy than that. Right. And there's a million variables here, obviously, but I'm just curious because I know people probably, you know, let's say they do do this. They're going to wonder, is it working? Is it not working? Whatever. Let's say for every 10 people you reach out to, what would you say a typical sort of response rate or, or partnerships? You know, if someone, should someone expect to go, okay, I reached out to 10 people and two people agreed to do it. One person agreed to do it. Nobody agreed to do it. What could they expect? Like how open do people tend to be to this kind of stuff? I would say if I am sending out 10 emails, I probably will get seven or eight responses. Someone might say, I'm off season right now. You know, can we do this in the future? So yes, we'll come back in the future. You know, it, they, and maybe two or three, maybe two. I would say two out of 10 actually get solidified on an average, sometimes more. That's, I feel like a very, very reasonable, maybe even way too low number. But that's why it's good to have a mix of, of sizes. 